Hello everyone, this is Adam Mann from 3D Scale, and I am reviewing this T44 Soviet medium tank from MiniArt for the modeling news. This is kit number 35193, and it came out the very end of last year. This has been anticipated because it was uh, the newest kit from MiniArt that's supposed to use um, slide molds, and has, you know, this full interior stuff. A lot of hype around it, so I'd like to see what it's made out of. So let's take a look. The instruction book is a full-color proper booklet. There are quite a few pages and quite a few steps here. Color callouts are MIG ammo, which is interesting. The sprue map is quite large. You can see quite a few sprues. Some of these things like F times 10, FA times 10. Quite a few duplicate sprues. So step one right away looks like we are doing engine assembly. Um, it looks about as complicated as I've seen uh, the rye field or dragon stuff when they do it. The way that they broke this part up, similar to the rye field one I did. It doesn't look terribly difficult. These are all tiny little separate parts, so a little bit complex. Um, diagrams seem pretty good. They're actually quite large. Only a few parts going on. So here you've got one, two, three, four, five, you know, five-ish pieces going on here. Only a couple here. Not too bad. But this whole page is just engine assembly. This is done differently than I've seen before. You have like the torsion bars which go, you know, against each other and these casings that hold the pairs of them with the swing arms on the end. It's very interesting. And then that goes down into the floor of the tub with an escape hatch as well. And then this would be the engine which is mounted sideways, which is interesting, with some ammo storage racks and other parts for the interior right away. It's cool. Then here we have sort of bump stops possibly going on here with these, I guess would be drive housings. Separate springs going here. If I look at it, oh no, there are tons of these little guys, little photo etch guys that go sliding in here. That's interesting. You're getting some pretty complex stuff, fire extinguishers, more PE there. You've got your rounds here, so now we're finally putting quite a bit into the interior. Uh, firewall, the sides are going on. Then in this step again, we've got more ammo. And then eventually right here, the sides go on. And the whole rest of this page is sort of lower hull coming together, actually quite quickly. Doesn't look too difficult though, all plastic here. So here's some photo etch grills, quite a few of them actually. And then getting a little bit busy down here with the fenders. This is all very reminiscent of the T-34 by the look of it right now. Um, or a T-55, I suppose. This is an in-between of the two. Headlight, sort of idlers on the front. And they're telling you to put the tracks together here. They are indie link now, I'm not sure. It's 35 per side. I think some of them are on a sprue and then some of them are on like these little separate track type sprues. Here, just fenders, um, spare tracks, which looks like PE to hold them in actual track links. Toolboxes, I believe are fuel cans. These little mounts for them are done in plastic, which is good, at least for someone like me. Uh, and then fenders go on to lower hull. Still no top plate here where the turret goes though. So the hatch here we're building with quite a complicated periscope assembly. Holy cow. Um, yeah, this is turret interior, like turret ring, some seats and stuff. Then here is that, that plate. Okay, no, so that's the, the hatch here, like a driver's hatch. Excellent. And then the tow cable. Now this is done in plastic and they're telling you to bend it. I don't care for that at all. All right, so this looks like the interior of the turret. So we've got the breech, which is in halves. An adequate amount of parts going on. That's quite a tiny bit right there. It's kind of similar to the way that um, the rye field one was actually real fiddly in the turret. You kind of have to be, I suppose. So, um, so then the sort of the guard around the breech, the sight, and I'm not sure what this is. So do with the elevation, probably, and holding one side of the gun. Oh no, okay, so this is the mechanism for the seat. All right, so there's the sight, the breech. This is all very different to me. I'm used to German stuff. 
strange. Okay, so their gun has a suspended seat on it, which is very different. So all of this looks pretty complex, but um, not undoable. All right, so this is the turret have, and quite a lot else, elevation stuff. I think it's the motor, or the, something to do with the traversing of the turret. Parts similar to what I've seen in other turrets, I guess you'd call that. Radios. I got a little P stuff there. Yeah, so this stuff all the way on the side of the turret. Pretty standard how you do that. You build a half with all the stuff in it, and the other half with your stuff in it, and you slap them together. That's like a bedroll on the back of that. So then all the rest of the stuff on that side. A ton of ammo storage here. Turret bottom and roof, so ammo storage going here, lots of little bits going in here, periscopes, and some hatches, um, tiny little parts, not PE there though, plastic. Hatches will finally go onto the turret roof, the halves finally coming together with the breech and the gum, which looks like one piece, and the cupola. Final step is cupola goes onto turret roof, turret roof goes onto turret, turret, turret goes to the bottom of the turret, which goes onto the ring, which goes onto the rest of the tank. Marking options are largely unidentified. Uh, Red Army Summer 45. I don't think any of these actually got um, fielded in the war. I'm not positive, but 1947 to 1955. All right, we'll start with this big sprue. So here we have a really interesting way of molding these bits, but turret ring, turret sides, turret roof, turret bottom, the breech, uh, and some hatches, the mantlets, and that sort of bedroll in the rear. And then there's your barrel. Barrel looks nice. Only three points, two here and one there. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. Texture on the side of the turret looks pretty good. It's very thin, the size of this turret. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Lots of little knockout marks there, a la dragon. The mantlet looks pretty good. The breech looks good. Very comparable to dragons. These parts look really nicely made too. These little guys. These uh, sprue gates are a little larger than dragon stuff, but the parts themselves seem to hold up okay. Turret roof looks very nice. That's a very nice piece right there. The roof is very thin. Next we have this big sprue, which has our uh, lower hull roof and the three pieces for the tub. Looks like the firewall and other plates. These are drive housings. I think these are frames for the PE. This looks pretty nice. You've got a little bit of that warbling in there. Now I know that that's not necessarily a big deal, but all of their plastic has it. See, right there. Fidelity seems good though. I love this actual interlocking plates. That's how the thing was actually made. That's pretty cool. Not bad. A little thicker than the stuff in the last one though. There's the bottom. Some nice texture there. Is that intentional? That's that weird kind of marbly stuff. Here, look. It's only on this hatch. Weird. This looks good. That's nice. These little parts look good. Drive housings look alright. Next we have this brew which looks like fenders and the hatch and a few other things. Yeah, this looks okay. These fenders look nice. Not quite as thin as I'd expect. Hatch looks pretty good. 
fenders have quite a lot of detail on top. These are molded in quite nicely. Then you have this sprue, which is, by the look of it, just engine parts. Pretty nice. Pretty small parts. A little thick, maybe. And there's the main piece. Next, this sprue, which looks like it has duplicates of those engine parts, actually. And then some other small parts. Yeah, looks alright. This sprue with some more small parts. Detail looks good everywhere. It's hard for me to identify this stuff. All the small parts look good though. Then this, which has some larger hull plates. Detail on that is pretty nice. Very fine texture on the floor plates. That's thin too, I like that. Some stowage. Very pronounced. Another sprue full of very small little bits. That looks like part of a visor or vision block. A seat. Some of these are turret interior parts, that's part of the elevation mechanism. Doesn't look like anything's broken, there's the sight. Nice. A little thick, some of these parts, but not too bad. Then we got this little sprue, um, just the toolboxes and some framing, possibly for PE. Looks so like you got a broken part here. Let's see if I can nudge him back into shape, and I'll wait till I build it. Toolbox looks good. Next we've got this little sprue. We've got our cupola and some other parts on it. Cupola looks pretty good. Next we have two of this, which is just our tow cable. Um, I don't care for plastic tow cables if they want you to bend them. Tammy I used to do this back in the 70s and it usually doesn't work out. Detail on it seems okay. Texture on the cable itself. Then we have four of this sprue. This is just our fuel tank halves. Now you're gonna have a seam on there, but besides that, they look okay. Then we have ten of this sprue. Then we have five of this sprue. Only a couple of parts on here. Some thin frames, some grab handles. These look like the things you mount the torsion bars in. Lots of knockout marks and sprue gates. Looks good though. Then two of this sprue. On here is just our sprocket idlers. And then on, by the looks of it, another toolbox. These look nice. Some very fine parts up there. We then have 10 of this sprue. On here we have like a back in front of a wheel, uh, eight tracks and some other tiny bits. Wheels look good. There's your tracks, that's just the one with the cleat. The other ones are in a different sprue. Four attachment points per link. We then have 10 of this sprue. On here we seem to have rounds of ammo and I think these have to do with the torsion bar assemblies. 
Rounds look pretty nice. Only two attachment points per. Parts look good too. These might be hubs for the wheel. We then have two of this sprue. More small parts on here. Looks like a fire extinguisher there. Kind of cool. Some really small bits here. Could be periscope related. We have two of this sprue. More small parts. Everything on here looks pretty good. Very fine details there. Little tow hook things for the front. We have duplicate clear sprues. All that's on here is a few periscopes and they believe uh, bits for lights. They seem a little less clear than Dragon stuff, maybe a little bit foggy. Not too bad though. Definitely harder than Ryefield stuff. So then we have six of this. There's 12 links per sprue. It's only the in-between link with the flat side here. Again though, four attachment points per link, including on the ends. No ejector pin marks though. It's not bad. And these are flat, so it'd be easier to sand than your, say, tiger tracks. Moving on to our non-plastic parts. This is the photo etch sheet. Um, not that big for a kit of this size. Um, photo etch grills, a couple of clasps, I think, and then these things that you were stacking up on the interior. It seems to be of a good thickness, you know, soft enough to work with, but not too soft. Decal sheet has tons of Soviet style markings and a couple of Balkan crates. I know what I'm gonna do. Although, <laughs> if I remember correctly, that's a, uh, like a what-if scenario once, so maybe I won't, but you've got a couple different ones like captured and, and legit. So, um, the paper it's on seems a little Tamiya-ish, a little thick, a little shiny. I think the film's pretty substantial, but I'd have to put some on. I can't really tell from an inbox how decals work, and I have mini art kits in, in the house, but I haven't built any yet. So, uh, before I, I wrap up, I thought I'd just show the like as I was putting sprues back in the box, like that's how much is in this box. It is it's pretty packed. Um, you know, they've made extensive usage of uh, these sort of mini sprues. It's an interesting way to make kits. So that's the kit. It is um, massive. And it seemed to step up for many art. I didn't see anything nasty looking in there. Only a little bit of plastic that looked a little marbleized, which is kind of one of my complaints about their stuff. Um, I'm wondering why they use so many small sprues like that, but I guess it makes sense. And if they're saying they use slide molds, maybe their slide molds are smaller or something. And it's easier for them to make these much smaller sprues in, in large numbers than larger sprues. And we'll see. But um, first look, I'm impressed if you are into your uh, post-war, like interim sort of Soviet uh, era stuff. Uh, this looks to be pretty impressive. So I'll put it together and we'll see.